hello 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 so today's um show is sponsored by g body parts connect if you are not following g body parts connect on instagram make sure you go do so for all your g body and old school car needs so today um today's guest is Oh, I thought I just saw him come on. Oh, today's guest is OTM Mechanics. I'm sorry, OTG Mechanics. And um, for those of y'all that are not following him, I'll bring him on so he can go ahead and tell you guys what it is that he does that are not following the um, guests of the day, I'll let them explain to you guys what they do in the car world and the car community. So, yeah, I want to do it that way. Hello, how are you? Hey, what's up? What's up? First, I want to tell you thank you for taking time out of your schedule to sit down and talk to us and answer the questions and answer the fans' questions. We really appreciate it. I know you guys, all you guys are really busy. So, thank you for yeah. sitting down with us. Yeah, absolutely. It's a pleasure. Okay. So, so the first question, well, the first thing I wanted to do is um, I want you to let people know for the for the people that have been under a rock or <laughs> are not following you, what it is that you do in the car world. So I, um, I got a shop in Smyrna, just outside Atlanta, and I specialize in 94 through 96 in piles and caprices. Um, I saw a niche in the market. Um, a couple shops were doing things on them, but they weren't anybody that really knew them right. so i um i started working on them and just i got so busy with just impalas it was just i just kind of you know that's all i work on so i kind of made a name for myself as the guy to come to for you know impalas caprices probably 70 percent of the impalas in in atlanta i've either touched them or i've seen them or i've talked to the owners you know i know a lot of people um that own them and stuff like that so <laughs> okay so what what <laughs> what what made you just go for that type of car though so i've always been a lover of an impala the i'm originally from um i grew up in california in la inglewood cover city area and i tell you the first time i saw one um i was in middle school and there was a kid his dad everybody knew his dad was like a big time gang member drug dealer whatever and i remember we were all standing outside of school waiting to get picked up and i seen this car coming down the street and heard it he he had subs and it was boom and he hit the corner and I'm like, yo, what is that? <laughs> and um and one of my boys is like, Man, that's the new Impalas. Mind you, this is like two thousand and probably two thousand and one. And so they were still, you know, Fairly five years, six new, years old. Right. Yeah. So I was like, Man, that's nice. So every my whole life I was like, Man, I gotta get one, gotta get one. So my first one was a ninety one um Caprice on spokes and uh um, yeah, yeah, I bought it in Inglewood, drove it for a little bit, sold it, bought a 96, had a 93, I had a 94, I had a cloned Impala, and then uh, I moved to Georgia back in 2012, and I started a mobile mechanic business, and um, that's where the name came from. Um, my mobile business was on-the-go mechanic service, and uh, when the pandemic hit, so back in, I'm sorry, so I started the business, and then I found an Impala in 2017, um, traded a a suburban for it joined the car club and really the car club is the real reason um what i who i really need to thank for me being who i am it's uh atlanta inc and Paulus and caprices it's a nationwide car club right uh shout out we just did an event in new orleans uh which was pretty dope i'll have a video dropping on my channel about that and i joined the club i was doing mobile mechanic work just working on cars all over the city and then um i started working on club members cars so everybody would bring their car to me i started working on it and then another big influence dude that was on your show, well, his cousin is Carlos Miller. So Carlos reached out to me back in 2019 for some work. And I started doing a little bit of work here and there. Pandemic hit and, you know, nobody was going anywhere. So the mobile business just tanked. Yeah. So Carlos kept me busy pretty much the whole um, pandemic. I was building three or four Impalas for him through all 2020. And that's kind of what got me the notoriety so once i started working for him people started noticing um i kind of did my own promotion i reached out to whip addict so the very first video on my youtube channel is um i built that green car for carlos um it was sitting for a while i did the suspension mounted the wheels up got it back on the road 
So I whip at it, come to my house and film and promote it on his channel, put my name out there, and it just took off from there. So fast forward, I was working from home, um, my apartment garage, you know, and I had eight or nine Impalas and B bodies parked outside. And um, Dakota folks was like, "He got to get out of here. We sick of him." You know what the crazy part was? I was so cool with it. I was fixing their golf carts. I was doing all their work on everybody that worked in the office. I was fixing on their cars, so they wasn't tripping. Uh, but the neighbors started hating. I, one neighbor in particular, he was an old dude, drove a busted car, so he see all these nice cars. Young dude, I knew who, I found out who it was. So he was just basically being a hater. So. Code enforcement came, shut me down, and uh, one of my friends told me about the shop that I'm in now, and I, I put the deposit down, came into the shop early 2021, so this year makes two years I've been in the shop, and um, it kind of just took off from there. I just kept working and, you know, trying to get better, perfecting my craft. You know, this is my first time really having my own shop, having, being this involved in the car world. You know, um, I've always kind of been an outsider. I would just go to shows, not really know anybody, just kind of. But now, like, learning the politics of it and, and meeting and, you know, meeting different people and seeing what they do. So, you know, once I found my niche, I kind of stuck with it. And nobody else does what I do. There's nobody else that specializes in these cars. There's people that work on them. Like any, you take it to any shop, they'll do, you know, different things. But when it comes down to those niche things that you know not everybody would know about them that's kind of where i come in so i get a lot of cars that come from other shops they're like oh we can't figure this out or we can't find this part um you know i've taken jobs from bigger shops you know because they just they get stuck on it and uh <laughs> lgi that's my boy <laughs> um you know and you know that's kind of how it works so you know i just found a niche and i didn't you know i stay in my lane i tell people all the time they're like hey you know I like your work. Can I bring you this Cutlass? Can I bring you this Monte Carlo? And I'm like, nah, no. Nope. Nah. Impala's only. I stay. And anytime I try to do something outside of my lane, man, it just never kind of goes right. So I kind of just stick with the Impalas. It's what I'm known for. It's what I'm good at. You know, I'm not perfect, but, you know, I, you know, I've kind of found what I like to do and I really don't want to do nothing else, you know. So there's, so there's a lot to unpack there. The first yeah. thing I want to say is, um, yeah, the, yeah, when the, when the, when the, I, I'm so happy that's in our rearview mirror, the mm. pandemic. When that yeah. hit, it made a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? It made a lot yeah. of people shift. It made yeah, a lot yeah. of people you, move around. You had to adapt. <laughs> you, had to, you had to sink or swim. And the other th thing is, um, you know, I've, I've done a lot of stuff for Carlos. And the one thing yeah. I can say is, I know he's... <laughs> At first, when I first started, even I'm gonna tell it's a funny story about how I met him. I met him because he reached out to me on my parts page. Mm -hmm. So he didn't know me personally. He reached out to me on my part page yeah. and he was looking for some seats for Monte Carlo. So I'm like, okay, be cool, mm -hmm. handle this. <laughs> so the seats, the seats, I lived in Jacksonville at the time, the seats were in Miami. Mm -hmm. I facilitated to get the seats from Miami yeah. to him in Atlanta. And, okay. and ever since then we've been locked locked in. But the thing the thing that I that I like about him and the thing that was always weird to, to me about him is and, and now that I have been working with a lot of different guys, I know that it's is you guys kinda have to handle the girls different. You get yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. You gotta I know you got my back. I know that I can reach out to him. He will have my back. Mm -hmm. But but it's it's business. You get oh, what I'm saying? Yeah. Does that make sense? It, it's yeah. business. Oh, it ain't yeah. you ain't never talking crazy. You ain't never talking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I at first I was like, this this is a little weird. We don't conversate. Mm -hmm. But I got to understand that. A lot of you guys, it's got to be business because y'all yeah. have been burned in the past. So it doesn't well, really directly have anything to do with me as a person because yeah. I'm not that person. But yeah. I get it because y'all have been burned in the past. And so yeah. I have had to understand, no, it's not me. Sometimes when people say it's not you, it's me. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's really not you. It's me. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So with that being said, he's a cool dude. And one thing I love about him is he spreads the wealth. Oh, yeah. You get yeah. what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. oh, he, yeah. he believes he wants to try to patronize everybody's business. He yeah. 
He wants to do business with everybody. Sadly and unfortunately, that is not. You can't. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. yeah we, saying, but you we, get and you get. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I was saying, I've, I've um, since I met Carlos, we've had, you know, we've had ups and downs. That's just that just comes with this card game. There's misunderstandings. There's, you know, but through it all, it's always been it's always been love. I mean, he'll hit me. He's called me up. Hey, man, how the kids? You know, um, you know, I pull up to the house. You know, he's like, oh, man, man, you know, help yourself, whatever, you know. Um, you know, if I hit him for something, it's all, you know, and I put people on with him um, that are still, you know, solid people that still help him. You know, my shout out to my boy Torian, um, transports all his cars. You know, if y'all ever need transport, hit me up. I got a boy, he go all across the country for Carlos, picking up cars. I have transported cars for Carlos. Um, you know, even, um, even, even yard, you know, hit up yard, you know what I'm saying? He's cool. Everybody, you know, his whole family's locked in and they real, you know, that's one thing. He will support the small man because when he, when he first hit me up, I was literally like really just starting to figure it out. And I was working out of a, a apartment garage, you know, with a couple tools and kind of just building my first kind of big projects and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. when, honestly, when he hit me up, I, I didn't believe it. You know, I was like, who's this scammer? Because, because he, had, he didn't message me. He called me and he was like, yeah, this Carlos. And I'm like, and what was crazy was I remember I posted a picture and he liked the picture. And I remember showing my wife like, yo, this buddy from Wild and Out, like he liked my picture. Like, that's crazy. I didn't know he was into cars like that. And uh, mm -hmm. when he called me, like, it really was just like a, you know, like them, you know, and then I got plugged in with DC, did some work for him, did some work for, um, for um, Chico, crit, you know, okay. Chico, Chico, not really into cars like that. Yeah. Chico like new cars. Chico like foreigners mm -hmm. and stuff. But you know, I know. Yeah, he guy, just he's really not cool. our people. No, no, no. he cool <laughs> as hell. But nah, he like because even at uh, Carlos' birthday party, I was like, we gonna get old school, man. So you know, but it's you know, it's that having people like that, you know, that you have access to is really a privilege. You know, people don't realize it. You know, like even not even on like a financial just even just talking to Carlos and talking to the people around him and just, you know, soaking up game. Like they call him the sensei for a reason. So I've soaked up a yeah. lot of game, even with my business. Cause I was, I doubted myself a lot when I first started this, you know, I, you know, I always thought like, man, I'm not that good. Like, you know, I'm barely doing it. You know, I'm okay. I don't think I'm good enough to have a shop. And there's a video on my YouTube where he came here with his crew and they filmed and stuff. And he was like, man, I told this dude he was going to get a shop. And I was like, no, I don't think I'm ready for that. And, you know, here I am two years later holding it down, still got the shop. You know, it's stressful, though. That's one thing they don't tell you. Boy, you know, what comes with well, it, you know. Well, you know, I, I'm a firm believer of putting things, speaking things into existence. Yeah. Just like I feel like you can speak positivity, mm -hmm. you can also speak negativity over your life. Yeah. So you got to really be careful. You got to really be careful um, at what you what you say, what you speak over yeah. your life. You know what right. I'm saying? And 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 like I said, it's a little different with you guys mm -hmm. and him and a girl and him. Because yeah. I feel like men, especially men like you guys, like men of stature, what you guys have shops, you guys have mm -hmm. like actually things to lose. Mm -hmm. Y'all gotta be careful. And yeah. you gotta treat it it's sad for me because I I would like it to be different, but mm -hmm. you gotta treat you gotta treat you got to do different when it comes to the women. I feel like, you know what I'm big, saying? I feel like a big part of it is just communication. And I, and I preach that so much on my, on my YouTube channel is just, I've, I've, you know, people talk a lot about shops and, oh, they didn't have my car this long and this went wrong and all that, which that's going to happen, you know, but as long as you communicate, whether it be business or whatever, you know, cause I've had instances where I bought stuff from people and it took forever. Or I've had work done on my car. Or I've taken forever to, you know, shout out to my boy, uh, let's get it. You know, I've had his car, BSU not, over a year. But I see him, it's all love. Because I kind of communicated the whole year, you know. is never no, he ain't got to worry about nothing. I'm, I've had customers tell me to stop calling them. Like, hey, bro, just call me when it's done. I don't need, you know, the update every week. But that's just the type of person that I am. Because when you're sitting there and you don't know what's going on, your mind gets to wonder, like, man, this dude, you know, taking forever. I don't know what's going on, this and that. But if you ain't got to worry about it and you stay, keep that open communication. So I feel like I've never had those type of issues with, I've done business. You know, I know Courtney, you know, she was, I met her through the car club. You know, I know she's been on your show. Um, you know, a couple other females in the car world I've talked to, but it's always just been, you know, hey, I'm the Impala dude. This is what I do. If you ever get one, need some work now, you know, somebody with one, you know, holler at me. But now it's gotten, which is, 
quite humbling the point where when I tell people who I am, they already know, you know, if I mention in politics, they're like, oh yeah, you got the YouTube channel. Like I watch your videos and I'm like, okay, cool. You know? So it's, you know, I feel like even with, like me personally, I don't deal with that type of stuff. I'm just, I'm too open with communication. I'm very, look, this is what it is. I'm going to call you before you ever got to call me. You know, I say what it is. Hey, this is the deal. This is what it is. This is what it's going to be. You know, and you really can't, it's really hard to go wrong when everybody's on the same page, you know. I just think it's sad and unfortunate that, like I said, you just you just gotta be. It, the world is so crazy. You just gotta be on your on your on your on your. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm trying to say, and mm -hmm. and I and I get that now too. Like, I don't think, and I and maybe I don't know if you get this as well. Like being a part, being on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if I knew what I was signing up for. No, you don't. I don't. <laughs> No, you never, I mean, when I, when I started this thing, it was, honestly, it was a, it was a hobby. I just, I always loved cars. I all, no matter what, I've worked in corporate America. I've had all kinds of jobs, but I always, I used to be, I always tell people, I used to be a regional sales trainer for Direct TV Corporate in El Segundo, California. Wow. I wore a tie. I was out of 401k. I had a salary and a desk, but you know what? 530 in the afternoon, I'm in the parking lot doing people's breaks. You know, in my suit, you know, I always went back to that. So when I started this, I'm still figuring it out. You know, I'm still, I'm still figuring it out, you know, because there's a lot, you know, with the YouTube, with having a shop, running a business, you know, because with me, I'm the, I'm the mechanic, you know, I'm not the business guy, you know, I'm the mechanic. I'll get in there all day and work, but at some point you gotta, you gotta step away and now you gotta sit in the office and now go through papers right. and, do business insurance and, and, and do stuff like that. And it just, you know, honestly, it got to a point where I was ready to give this up to be completely transparent. I was, I was this close to completely giving this whole thing up, like shutting the shop down, just going and just like, look, I'm just gonna, you know, maybe go work for another shop or maybe just go get a day job and just fix on my car and, and continue my YouTube channel based on what I built my car to be. But the demand is there for me so much. It's very hard to step away. You know, because, you know, I, I, I got a waiting list at this point where I got people waiting and that pressure to be, you know, when it was just me working out my apartment garage with my car club friends, if I mess something up, which is going to happen, it's like, you know, okay, give me an opportunity to fix it. You know, cool. We one on one. But now on the scale that I'm on, I messed something up. The whole world going to know. Listen, know? <laughs> so, so, so you know, here's the thing when it comes to that. Some stuff up, but can't nobody say that. If I mess something up, I didn't try to fix it or communicate it with you to make it right. I'm never right. going to run away. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I mess it up, cool. Let's talk about it. Let's work it out, you know? Well, that's what I kind of, that's what I tell people, like, shop, people at shops. We're all human. Mm -hmm. Everybody's human. I'm a, mm -hmm. I have a business. I'm a mess up. Everybody's going to mess mm -hmm. up. But at least give the people the opportunity to fix yeah. it. Don't get on social media and get on a whole rant talking about, mm -hmm. oh, well, bro, messed up my car and he won't do it. I see it all the did time. You, did you give him the opportunity to fix nope. it? Nope. When you did give him the opportunity to fix it, was he receptive to fixing it? Right. Because that's the other thing. If if a, one of my customers called me and said, hey, I this is not what I ordered. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, you know, first I apologize. Yeah, of course. Now let me fix it. Mm -hmm. Woo you know what I mean? Right. But if, if they called me and said, this ain't what I ordered, and I'm like, that is what you ordered, and I don't want to hear it. They're going to be like... Right. No, you got to... And I think that's where a lot of people get messed up in that the customer's always right thing. You know, I think that they worded that wrong. The customer is always right in regards to how they feel about the situation. You can't dictate how somebody feels about the situation. If, if I worked on somebody's car, something broke, they have every right to be upset, whether it's my fault or not. Because as far as they know, I was the last person to work on it. So you can't get mad of a, at a person for feeling that way. You know what I'm saying? If they blame you, they blame you. The only thing you can do is, hey, bring the car in. Let me take a look at it. Cool. Okay, look. It was my fault. I'll fix it. Don't worry about it. Or, look, the part failed. You know, this is what I can do for you. It's not your fault. It's not my fault. The part failed. We can't make, you know, um, you know GM pay for it. So I'll tell you what we'll do. You buy the new part. I'll put it on. I won't, you know, whatever, you know, it's communication is everything, you know? And I think that's when I read these things on cut the check racing on there and I see people going back and forth, 
you know, I always look like, did y'all communicate? You know, and 90% of the time, that's the problem. Oh, I can't get Buddy on the phone. I can't find him. He ain't responding to my messages. And there's so many problems in this car world that could be solved if people just pick up the damn phone. Just pick up the phone. You know, if you if you tell me, hey, my car going to be ready Friday, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, cool, cool, my car going to be ready Friday. And I know, I, you know, and I got a show to go to. You know, I'm like, cool, the show Saturday. I'm trying to make street whips or something like that. My car going to be ready Friday. You know what I'm saying? Friday morning come, and I don't hear from the dude. I'm thinking, okay, everything on schedule. I show up in the afternoon. My car ain't ready. Like, bro, you should have told me Wednesday my car wasn't going to be ready Friday. Because, yeah, I'm going to be upset, but at least, okay, it's Wednesday. I got two days to try to figure something else out. Or I'm like, all right, I'm not going to make this show. But if you tell me Friday, I'm already getting the trailer ready. I'm getting dressed. You know, I'm getting, you know. So I think what a lot of people with these shops just got away from, and the shops, too, are to blame, is communication. They run from these customers, and they run from these problems because I've dealt with all kinds of clients. I've dealt with people with $5 in their pocket. I've dealt with people as big as Carlos Miller. And 90% of the time, just communicate, no matter what it is. The angriest dude that I talk to, you know what I'm saying? I done messed something. Perfect story. Mr. Let's get it. You know, I had his car, you know, all this time. I hit him. I talked to him at least twice. At least once a week, I hit him up. Hey, bro, this is where we at. You know, I've been busy lately. He hit me up. I answered the phone. What's up? This is what we got going on. This is where we're at. I curbed the hell out of his wheel, <laughs> you know, and I, you know what I'm saying? I hit him up. Hey, bro, curbed your wheel. Your 26-inch Savine. I curbed it a lot, you know, but I'm going to fix it. All right, cool. I appreciate you telling me. No, I could have fixed it and not said anything, you know, but he wasn't upset. I mean, even if he was upset, it didn't show because he was just like, hey, man, all right, you know, as long as you take care of it, you know, cool. We we never even talked about it again. So I just like, that's just the main thing I see. And I, I, I preach this so much on my YouTube channel. Any new customer I deal with, I'm like, look, if we're doing a big project, you know, I understand this is a $30,000 job. You know, not everybody got $30,000 sitting aside to set into a 25-year-old car, you know? So cool. I understand how money goes or whatever. Just communicate with me because I'm basing my business off of you paying me. You know what I'm saying? So if, if you tell me you're going to pay me Friday, I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to get paid Friday. I'm going to order parts. They're going to come in. I need to set aside time for this. Saturday come, I ain't heard from you. I'm going to be upset because I'm like, damn, bro, you could have told me Wednesday you wouldn't go pay. I ain't tripping. I just put it to the side move on to the next thing. So like, I'm going to get some shirts made. Communicate. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just the biggest, I'm telling you, that would solve so many problems. That would solve so many problems in this car. Well, I hope everybody watching is listening, man. Like, whether you're a shop owner, you, even if you're a customer, like, just just call that man. Pick up the phone. Send a text. You know, just something. You know, because, like I said, when people, same like dealing with a woman. You know, you don't communicate. You out all night. You know, you, yeah. you, you could have fell asleep in your car drunk. You know what I'm saying? But if you don't communicate, her mind going to get to one end. She's going to pop up. You're going to have a problem. You just no, you just going to be single the next day. That, that, that's all. Exactly. That, that's me. You just going to be single. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like that's just the, the biggest thing with a lot of it is communication. Like, I've dealt with so much bad communication. I don't even really outsource anything anymore. You know, if I can't do it in my shop, I don't even offer it anymore. I've just gotten so burnt on on that type of stuff and interior, you know, just anything damn near that I don't do it here. If I, I stopped doing it, you know, I was doing full bills at one point and I just, people just let me down and it's not the workmanship. It was the communication because if I give you a job to do, I say, Hey, this is for this car, how long is it going to take you? You know, Oh, it's going to take me six weeks. Cool. So now I'm going back to the customer and I'm smart. I'm like, Hey man, it's going to be, it's going to be two months. I'm going to give myself a cushion. But now you took six months with the car customer coming at me. They don't know you. And it, it just causes so many problems, you know? And that's part of what discouraged me from even keeping the business at one point because it was like, you know, can't get no, you know, the people I'm, I'm working with is screwing me over. I can't find any help in the shop. So it's adding more stress to me, you know, because now I'm in charge of everything, you know? I got, if I got to go pick a car up, I got to go get it. If I need parts, I got to close that door, run the auto zone and get it. You know, I got no help. Luckily, recently I found a really good dude to work for me. He's amazing. I can't sing his praises enough. He saved this business single-handedly. Wow. I'm telling you, I was ready to let it go. I was, it was too stressful. It was too stressful on me. It was too stressful on my family. It was just, and they don't tell you that. They don't tell you that. People see me and they see my car. They're like, oh, you got a nice car. You got your own shop. You got a YouTube channel. Like, yeah, that's all good. But they don't see the, the what goes on behind the scenes. Like this, this, this is, if it was easy, everybody would do it. 
You know what I'm saying? I see, I see at least three or four of my clients on this channel right now. Nobody's talking shit about me because right. regardless whether I did a good job, a mediocre job, if I messed something up, I've always kept it 100 and tried to try to make it right and communicate it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Every, you know, any, nobody can say I didn't do that. You know, even, even if I was the worst mechanic on earth, you can't say I didn't communicate. <laughs> you so, know? so outside of communication, what do you think is the biggest um, obstacle you have encountered owning a shop? Oh, yeah, I see you. Um, probably just employees. I've been through... I've been through probably four or five people since I've had this shop. I had one older guy that, that was working for me for a while. He actually used to help me when I was working at home. And uh, he got sick. He came, helped me at the shop when I first opened. He wasn't the best mechanic, but it was help. You know, he could help with the heavy lifting. I can give him a few tasks. Um, but then he went and got his CDL and got on that road, you know. And then I had a couple people here and there that just, I had one dude come. He fo he's followed me for for a while on social media and you know it was like a fan and i was like all right man, man you work on cars come on you know buddy came work for four days never showed up again he didn't even stay long enough to get paid and i hit him like bro cool if the job's not for you cool just at least come back and get paid like i'll pay you never heard from him again until like a couple months ago you know i even answered the phone like what are you calling me for now you know he might have um, been in jail <laughs> <laughs> but even then it's like say that you know but you know and then i had one dude go ahead you know he can get the word out you know <laughs> but we were we were we were social media connected so i knew he wasn't in jail he, nigga was posting but it's just like communicate if the job ain't for you you don't like me i'm not a good boss you don't like the shop it's too hot it's too dirty you don't like these whatever i don't care i'm a very reasonable dude you know so that was part of it. I went through two other employees. One dude lasted a day. One dude stole some stuff from me. You know, that, that was probably the hardest part was finding help. You know, even somebody come in and run the office. You know, so I just recently, like I said, within the last probably two, three weeks found somebody who, like, he's solid. Like, he knows what he's doing. Um, he worked for another shop that's pretty big, and he came and started working for me. Um, and actually, it's funny. It's really interesting. I changed the way. There's something else I noticed, too. Um, I changed the way I communicate with people online, you know, um, I'm kind of a smart ass, you know, I'm very sarcastic. I'm very, why are you asking stupid questions? You know, but then you got to remember sometimes at one point I was asking them stupid questions, <laughs> you know, and I remember just recently, probably about a month or two ago, I had a customer who ordered, who wanted to do an LSA swap on his Impala. And so I'm shopping around for vendors for an LSA boost district, stuff like that found a dude on the Facebook group and I just started going through his posts and looking at how he was interacting with people that are asking questions. So I'm like, damn, this dude's a jerk. Because people are asking some pretty technical questions. Like, hey, you know, if I'm running E85, you know, in the flex fuel, so, you know, stuff like that. And I'm like, I don't know that. You know, that's not a general. And he was just being a jerk. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to order with you. And then I found another dude. I shot him a message Sunday, six o'clock. You know, and I didn't expect a response. I just, hey, I just want to get this message out there to you, you know, talk to you tomorrow. It's just, oh, I didn't want to forget. Dude, we talked from like six to nine o'clock on a Sunday night. I spent $13,000 with that dude in a couple of days, you know, and I was like, damn, that was just awful watching his, you know, so, but that comes with having help, you know, because I get people are stressed out. They're doing stuff on their own. Um, so, yeah, I would say that was the biggest thing is finding solid people to work for you. Some of these shops. You know, they got they got some solid people working there and you got to take care of your people. You know, I'm paying my guy more than what he was asking for. It's hurting. Oh, it's stinging. You know, I asked him, you know, when he first came, I was like, hey, man, how much you need to make? I'll pay you weekly. How much you need to make a week? You know, how much you looking for? And he gave me a number. I was like, okay. So I gave him that for the first, like, week, tried him out. And I was like, cool. Hey, starting this week, I'm going to give you this amount, you know? And it's worked out great. You know, he's, I'm hope he stick around, you know? He's given me a chance now to take a little bit of a step back. I'm not in the shop as much. I'm, I'm you know, I'm trying to handle all the business stuff now because I don't have to be in here turning wrenches every day. I'm still here. Like, I'm here now, you know. But, yeah, that, that was probably the second biggest thing is finding good help. And I think everybody is suffering from that right now. Well, yeah, communication definitely rules the nation when it comes to the guy that you bought, um, bought spent the 13000 with. Yeah. One thing that I have um, had to learn how to do is 
I'm all, I'm all, I've always been a personable person. Mm-hmm. Um, the one thing that I've had to learn how to do is, like you said, learn how to talk, how to communicate with people mm-hmm. on social media. It's hard. You know what I mean? As, it's hard. As it goes, I'm already just a friendly person. Yeah. So what I have to realize is I'm a female mm-hmm. in a male dominated. Yeah. In a male dominated world. Mm-hmm. So me just being nice is mistake can be mistaken for something else. Yeah, of course. So of as course. much as in my head I see myself as one of the guys. Mm-hmm. When I'm with y'all, I I'm one of the guys. Yeah. Yeah. But like my homeboys around me tell me, KP, you not a guy. Yeah. You know that, right? Yeah. You, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> I got, yeah. I, but I'm Guys. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, yeah, communication is definitely, and when you communicate well with people, they don't have a problem with sending you to, sending you their money. Mm-hmm. They don't got to pull up, up on you. They're like, what's your yeah. cash out? What's your bill? What's your yeah. PayPal? I mean, yeah. You know what I mean? But when you don't communicate well, even, no matter how bad somebody wants to purchase something from you, they're going to be really hesitant to spend their money or send their yeah. money. They're going to feel like they got to pull up. They're going to feel like, you know what I mean? That's, yeah, that's how crazy. You gonna act, how you going to act? If you're not even communicate with me now to get the money, how you going to communicate once you got my money? Tax. You know what I'm saying? Or something go wrong. How are you going to handle it? And now you're about to run away now, with my money. And I look, and that's what I look at now. When I'm looking at people to do business with, to either a service or a product, I'm like, okay, I look at your track record. I'm like, okay. Is people talking bad about you online? What, what's your presence like? You know, if, if I need to get in touch with you, can I get in touch? Are you known? You know, are there other people that I can reach out to in case you get to act the funny that can find you or, you know, and not even, and I don't deal with that type of stuff much anymore because I learned, you know, I learned who to mess with and who not to mess with, you know? I'm like, cool, I'm not going to mess with you no more. I ain't, no, ain't going to talk bad about you, but I just, I'm cool, you know? It is what it is, you know? So that's that's a big part of it. That's a huge part of it. Not to mention, you just really got to conduct yourself in a certain way because you never know who's watching. Exactly. And that's, and like I said, that's what made me change. Because I don't know if you're a part of any of the Impala groups, but there's a, there's a couple of Impala groups out there. I'm in all of them. And, you know, people, um, you a liar. <laughs> you see this fool? Um, you know, you get people that, you know, they just bought their first B-body. You know, and they're asking trivial stuff. And I used to be that guy like, you know, oh, you're stupid, you know, whatever. You know, why are you asking this? But then, you know, it's like, damn, if I'm acting like that, you know, why would you why would you want to do business with me? Especially since I'm running a business and I'm known as the B-Body guy, you know. Um, you work on that too. I said, do you work on original B-Body motors? Yeah, yeah. I got, got I work on, if it's a B-Body, if it got an LS in it, I'll LS swap it. If it's got an LT1 in it, I'll do an LT1. The only thing I don't do, is I don't modify LT1 engines. Um, and the reason for that is I don't have a solid tuner for LT1 engines. So as far as camming them and, you know, head work and stuff like that, I, that's not something that I want to do. But if you got a stock one, you just want to add some headers, maybe put a stall in it, some gears, and need a tune-up, it ain't running right. You know, yeah, I mean, that's, that's part of it. I, I'll take care of all that. That's no problem. Um, the LS stuff is just me giving the people what they want. You know, people want LS swaps, I'm gonna give them LS swaps. I'm a big fan of LS swaps. You know, I do, you know, my first, my first LS swap I did 20, 2009 on a 96 two-door Tahoe. I had a morsel of knowledge that I have now. And I did that entire swap from start to finish, got the truck running and everything and sold it right before I moved here. And uh, it's actually, and I actually, I have a, it's, there's a, there's a, um, a forum called ls1trucks.com. Mm-hmm. I got like a 42 page thread in there, step by step, how I did it. And this is back 2009. So, you know, LT1, LT1 stuff is nothing. I mean, a lot of people don't understand them. You know, they're, they're not that bad. You know, once you, once you, um, once you kind of understand how they work, they're actually pretty simple. It's just people don't take the time to do, learn them because they only made them for four years and, you know, nobody really want to mess with them so i was like okay cool i got you i'll take them <laughs> so you made sure you learn how to do that and like you said you just stay in your lane stay in my lane that's the one thing i do now at this point i am taking i am starting to take other other projects because of the guy that works for me the guy that works for me he's done hundred thousand dollar donks chevelle box he's done everything he actually has only done a few impalas and that's actually how we met 
um, he had a client that wanted Impala done, and he actually found me on Instagram. And he came by the shop, and he's like, look, man, I'm swapping this Impala. I'm stuck at this part, you know. And he came at me like that. He's like, I'll pay you for your time. 90% of the time, somebody offered to pay me for my time, I'm not going to charge him. If you offer right. I'm not going to charge you. You know what I'm saying? But if you come at me trying to get free knowledge, I'm going to direct you to my YouTube channel. I'm like, I probably answered it on YouTube. You got to do a little bit of research. You know, I feel but, like I probably know the person you're talking about, but I'm not going to. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> so what, what do you think, um, oh, wait, what, let me, it's a two part question. Okay. What is, what do you think is the best thing about being in the car world and being a shop owner and the worst thing, like the thing that you hate the most that you're like, Arr. okay. <laughs> so what I love about it is I love cars. My entire life revolves around cars. You ask my wife. I don't. I don't. I don't watch sports. I'm not into basketball. I don't know who. She asked us so funny the other day. She asked me. She was like, "Name two players there." She's a Heat fan. Name two players that play for the Heat. I, I don't know. I don't. Not a sports fan. So being able to make money doing something that I love to do, and you know, I've built my dream car to the best of my finances and what I could do. But to have people come to me with, you know, their dreams and being able to build their dreams and seeing their face and, you know, seeing them out riding in traffic or I hop on lives like this or I'm online and people are, hey, man, you know, loving you, you know, loving what you're doing, you know, just the recognition for the grind, you know, just right. people seeing like, and I think the YouTube is a big part of that because I show, I've shown my failures and I've shown my wins, you know, so I think that's the biggest part the community the people i've met the connections i've made um you know just you know helped me learn a lot about myself you know just ha having a shop learning what my strengths are learning what my weaknesses are um i say the worst part worst part about ha having a shop is the pressure you know especially you know not even ha having a shop it's really just building a brand right. that you got to stand behind right. that's a lot of pressure you know when people you know I always say i want the name otg to be synonymous with 94 through 96 impalas but it's a it's a heavy weight that come with that you know because you know there's some people in the car world name you mentioned and you're like eh, nah you know you know and i never wanted to get like that for me not by any fault of mine now if people feel right. the way they feel that's on them you know, but that's probably the work part, especially with social media. And, you know, you get you get one person say something, the next person hop on, they don't even know the full story. And they just agreeing like, oh, yeah, all shops are like that. But bro, you don't even know me. You don't even know the type of business I run, you know. Um, so I say the best part is doing what I love and, 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 and building these cars and people, you know, when I make the YouTube channel and people watch a video, and they're like, man, I've been trying to figure this out for weeks. I'm so happy you made this video. And I'm like, yeah, that's why I made the video, you know? Um, and just, just the love of when I go out to shows and I see people, you know, and, and you know, and seeing people driving their cars and knowing I was a part of that or I'm in that world, you know, that's why I hit all these local shows, you know, whip at it, whip by wave. You know, I saw you at, what was that? The, um, the one at the strip club. That was Step. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that was Step show. You know, like I like going to those local shows because those are also people who have love for these cars that are bringing us all together, you right. know? So the community is really what I love. And like I said, the, the worst part is the pressure, man. The, you know, the, the pressure, the pressure. It's a lot. Well, what I find out about uh, social media is nine times out of 10, them people who be talking crap about y'all at a shop. They want finna never do no business. Now, mm -hmm. if you may get one person that was on there that did business with you mm -hmm. or, may have been thinking about doing business with you, but nine times out of 10, most of them ain't never, they never done business with you. They wasn't going to never do no business with you. They probably ain't never done business with nobody that they on social media talking crap mm -hmm. about. They just want to say something to dirty somebody's face. Yeah. And what's funny is, shout out to uh, my boy Todd at College Park Country, <laughs> because I've saw him, I remember when, when I first started following Todd, I was like, damn, that nigga be cussing somebody out every day. You know, he's gotten so much better, but, you know, once I got to talk to him and, and, and you know, I've done business with him and stuff like that, I get it. <laughs> you know, I handle it different, but I get it. You know, I get it. And shout out to him, man, because people don't, because I've seen people talk trash about him, but people don't understand what it comes with. You know what I'm saying? And 90% of people ain't never spent a dime with him. 
You right. know what I'm saying? And, and, you know, they get on there like, yeah, I heard this, I heard that. Like, but you ain't never even shopped with the man. You ain't never went and shook the man hand. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's the bad part about social media, especially that cut the check page. Boy. Woo! <laughs> 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 that page is a bl- you looking for some stuff to buy it's a good page but boy somebody get on there with an opinion <laughs> it's a wrap I don't even be being on Facebook so I never know nothing they say on Facebook man, man it's, it's, it's entertainment for me I love it because <laughs> I don't I mean I don't get involved in it I don't like I said I try to keep my you know if I got an issue with anybody you know you can call me we'll talk we'll, we'll you know whatever it is I got to do to fix it now now if you're wrong you're wrong you know what I'm saying? But I've taken L's. I've taken taken it to the chin. Like, you know what? Let me just go on and square this away so there's no no problems. And a lot of them people have come back to me for stuff. Or rec- there's people I've done business with where it didn't go right, but I did everything I did to make it right. And I find out later, like, yeah, I got your number from such and such. You know, like, really? You know, you know like, I'm not perfect. You know, nobody can say they perfect. Can't nobody say they every single car they touch came out perfect. Right. Can't. Because sometimes it's audio control. Sometimes it just it just happens, you know? So, but it's just how you, how you respond to it, how you, how you follow up. You right. know, that's something that I learned a long time ago. You know, anybody that, that I've done work for within two days, I'm calling you. Hey man, just want to follow. I'll shoot you a text. Hey man, want to follow up, make sure everything good with the car. And so many people should be so surprised at that. I'm like, why would I not? Why would I not? You know, why would I wait for you to call me? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, no, everything cool. You know, I was like, well, I figured since I hear from you, but I want to make sure, you know. Um, if you have, I think, I guess, being that you worked on Impalas, um, is that your dream car? Oh, or yeah. if it's not, have you, have you built your dream car? Come on, show you right here. <laughs> you got it tattooed on you? <laughs> so you don't have no other dream car outside of those? Impala. You know, that's what I grew up. Yeah, 64 convertible. That's what I grew up. I mean, Growing up in L.A., that's what I saw. Go down Wilshire, go down Crenshaw. You know, you see 64s, you know. So besides the, the B-body, I would say probably that. But I'm not – believe it or not, I don't, I'm not a Chevelle guy. You know, if I have the opportunity, I would never buy a Chevelle. You know, I wouldn't buy a Chevelle. I've had a couple of G-bodies. They were cool, but I've always been an Impala guy. I've always – you know, I've kind of built mine almost to my, my dream. Like, I've done everything to it so far that I've wanted to do and. Even in building my car, I wanted to make sure it's um, it's different because you know, let's admit it, ninety percent of the cars in Atlanta look the same, you know, or have the same thing that's done to them. Now, there's a couple that stand out, but for the most part, everybody kind of does the same thing. There's nothing wrong with that. It looks good, you know. It, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just if I'm gonna be the guy that's building these cars and I say, hey, this is what I specialize in. Mine got to be different, you know. So I built mine with a dream, and it's almost, almost there, almost. <laughs> but yeah, besides the, the 94, and mine's a 95, mine's not even a 96. I didn't even want a 96. My first one was a 90, well, besides the 91, my first Impala was a 96. And I had a, it was a daily driver. I drove it to work every day, but it didn't have cup holders. And I hated that. And I remember <laughs> one, of my, one of my homeboys, he bought a 95 DCM, like what I got, and he pulled up on me. And I'm like, you got cup holders. And I didn't know that much about them. So I was like, how you get cup holders? He's like, oh, this is a 95. I was like, so how you change gears? And he was like, it's on the column. I'm like, I don't care about this floor shift. I'd rather have the column so I can have my cup holders. So when I moved here and I found mine, I wanted a 95 because everybody wanted a 96. And I'm like, nah, give me a 95. You know, so that's my, you know, 95 Impala, 64 Impala convertible. That's my. So when you going to get the 64? When it falls in my lap. You ask my wife, anything I say I want them to get. And I don't know how it happens. I, it surprises me sometimes because for a long time, ever since I sold my two-door Tahoe in 2012, I've been wanting another one. And last year, April 11th, I bought my new Sierra. Well, not new Sierra, but new to me Sierra. And the same day, I bought a two-door Tahoe. And, you know, brought it home, fixed it up, and somebody made me an offer, and I sold it. But she she brought it up to me. She was like, every time you say you want a car, you get it. And it just happens that way because I wanted, I was like, man, I want a Denali pickup, or I wanted this, I wanted that. So I'm just waiting. You know, I'm I'm a I'm a people person. I talk to everybody. You know, um, I'm definitely a um, extrovert. I have no, I can walk up to anybody and talk to them about anything, anytime. I'm not afraid to talk to people. So being that I'm that type of person, I'm gonna find me a '64 and I'm gonna get it probably for free or very close to cheap. I don't I don't pay a lot for stuff because I just well I stuff always how- fall in my lap. So yeah. if one fall in my lap, I'll 
I'll send it gotta, your way, but I don't yeah, know if they're gonna, if you know, it's gonna be free. But I'll right, send it. Yeah, I gotta be ready for that because that's gonna be a that's gonna be a ten year project. I want to pull that off the frame and you know make it like really take my time with it, like really make a low. I'm gonna make it a low rider, of course. You know, yeah. yeah. Listen, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something about them low riders. Mm -hmm. I I never okay. I grew up in Florida, so you know that's the dunk capital. Yeah, I never. I always seen low riders like how they look, but I always in my head said, why they do that to their car, that pretty car? Well, years on down the road, I started hanging out and talking to, shout out to my boy TJ at Avenue Convertibles. Mm -hmm. Now, this is how you never know who you're talking to, right? TJ is from Vegas, but TJ okay. is in the low rider hall of fame. Wow. And I ain't know. But when I started taking trips out to Vegas, he showed me his ring. Wow. He showed me the pictures of, he showed me like his cars. Mm -hmm. He was explaining to me how, like, so me being from Florida, thinking, you know, dunks are the creme de la creme. Mm -hmm. Like, this is what we spending money on. Mm -hmm. He told me about <laughs> them low riders and let me look at the frame. And I was like, oh, oh. I seen the argument comments online people like oh donks versus low riders and i like i love donks don't get me wrong i gotta i got four g's i got 24 i'm all for it but i'm gonna tell you something right now you ain't got nothing on low riders the way them dudes build them low riders nah you talking you can eat off the damn fuel pump on them cars like the the yeah it's so growing up in la and seeing that seeing these dudes you know chrome out the door springs and chrome out the dipstick tube, well, they come like that, but just every little, I've seen a dude, he had, you know, those spacers that you use to, the shims to, <laughs> um, to shim the control arm. I see the dude mm -hmm. chrome those out. You know, these are the shims, the alignment shims, the camber shims. So, I mean, they go into detail on them cars. I've seen $300,000 lowriders, easy, you know. Not to mention, they got like, Etching, oh, yeah. is it called etching mm -hmm. on the front? Yeah, the uh, frames. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, everywhere control arms, frames, door handles. Yeah, it's it's nuts. And you know, in LA, Mexico, right there. So, like, we used to go to the Tijuana, and I took I had an El Camino back in the day. I took the Tijuana to get the interior done. It don't cost nothing down there. They did my entire interior. The interior in the El Camino was like thrown together, different colors. They did the entire interior for like 800 bucks. In wow. Mexico. Tijuana. Now, mind you, this is back in like 06, but oh. still back then, you know, you know, yeah, engraving. He said, what he said. Yeah. engraving. Look, yeah. but I'm just going to tell you now, don't take that thing down to Tijuana now. Thank no, Yesterday's no, no. price is not today's price. Not at all. No, <laughs> not at all. Not at all. But no, nah, the lowriders, man, it's just a different it's, and a lot of them lowriders, man, they be <laughs> Look what you said. What you saying? <laughs> I got you. Oh, man, I'm muted. He, we, um, we it'd know be, it'd be family, you know, it'd be family generations, you know, it'd be grandpa that bought that 64 new and started low riding back in the 70s. And then the son got it and then the son got it. And they, man, them, them low riders out there, no joke, you know, not, don't, I, I might, don't take nothing away from the donks. Damn, I don't want a bunch of people hopping on my thing like, nah, man, because they got some nice donks. And I've seen donks with the engraving on the frame and, and done the same thing, but I've just seen more low riders built to that standard. That I have. Been. I don't know if I ever seen a dunk with no engraving on the frame that wasn't that oh, wasn't a low rider. Oh, it was a low rider dunk. <laughs> yeah, it was, a glass house. it was a glass house. It was a seventy-five. That was the first but dunk I ever seen. Them darn low rider people. I was. I told TJ. I said, "Why y'all spend all that money on that car and then bounce it up and down? Don't it tear up?" He said, "No, they don't tear up. That's what we build them for." Yeah. They are reinforced. Mm -hmm. They are. I was like, man, y'all yeah. crazy. He was yeah. like, but it's just a way of life. Yeah, it's it's that's low riding is it's it's literally like a way. It's the, like you said, it's a way of life. Them dudes go so hard for that stuff. It's a it's a real family. Like them cars ain't built by one person. The whole car club get together and build that car. I've seen it. Individuals, Majestics, all them dudes, man, they're like this. And they come down to the house Friday, and you got one dude who can paint, and he paints everybody's cars in the club because they're about they're about the club looking good. You know what I'm saying? They're about all of us looking good, not just me looking good. 
you know it's a lot of you know it's, it's a lot of selflessness in the lowrider community you know right. um which is different from what we dealing with up here everybody want to stand out and you know be their own person but with the lowriders man it's you know it's because it, and plus it comes down to the gang culture too you know that's kind of mm -hmm. tied into it a little bit not with everybody but a big part of it you know the essays they got their gang the threats A's and all of them, they be together and they build their low riders together. So they family. So they, they want everybody to look good when they come out. So that's a big part of it too. We need to get back to that in the, you know, in the car club world out here. You know, let's start, you know, and I've, and I've tried, like I got, what, one dude's car here in my car club that I'm building, you know, and I'm going all out on his. You know, we go to the same shows. We, we compete for the same trophies. But if he win a trophy, I want a trophy. You know what I'm saying? Because I built that car, you know. And I don't think a lot of people look at it like that anymore. You know, they they like, oh, I'm not going to build your car better than mine. You know, so I want every, every every car to come out this shop I want better than mine. My car is nice, but I need every car coming out of here to be better than mine. You know, I need right. all these cars to be beating me out in all these trophies because I built them. Because that says more about me than me, my car winning, you know. I, I think the thing about just in general us, as I sit back and I look at a lot of stuff that happens in the car world, um, firstly, um, a lot of people not really building their car because they necessarily quote unquote love cars. Right. They're building the car so that they can be seen by mm -hmm. people yep. and not even building the car to their own liking. Nope. They are building the car to someone else's liking. That's, the That's why when them. people ask me what's going what about my car that I'm building, why did I do this? Or why did I do that? I can't tell you how many people how many people ask me why you took your car to College Park Customs. Why you took your car to this person to do the, you know, why you going to cut the check? Why are you going to stitch with spot sleep? Why are you going here? Why are you going there? Firstly, for me, I can't say that somebody is my partner and I don't give them the opportunity yeah. to touch my car. Yeah. And not even that. I took my car where I felt like it needed to go. Right. I took it where I felt like I was going to get the best service. I took it where I felt like I was going to be done fairly. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you. Well, do you think I should? I'm not going to tell you to take your car here. I'm going to tell you where I took my car. Yeah. And yeah. I, I took it because that's where I felt comfortable. Yeah. Now, you free to take your car to where you want to take it. Yeah. But me, I, I, I took mine where I took it, and I said what I said. That's that's a bar you said right there, though. There's a lot of people that. They don't they don't they don't build the cars because they love them they build them to be seen and that's you could see it that's why i said like not, a lot of these cars out here look the same because they just copying what everybody else is doing you know like when i see when I, and especially like so i've been going to car shows and stuff but i knew my car wasn't ready i wasn't ready to put my car in shows yet i was still building i was still having fun with it but now i've gotten to the level this year where i'm like all right i'm gonna put my car out there and show people what i can do and when i look at just coming up looking at some of these cars that like win trophies and stuff like that i'm like why and it, it ain't hating it's just my opinion you know when i look because as a builder and somebody who builds cars and lives this life i look at different things that other people don't look at when i look at these cars so i built my car different i didn't build my car to blend in with everybody else's you know i built my car different i can tell you honestly there's not another impala in atlanta like mine not one that even competes with mine not as far as the best looking or the fastest just the stuff that I've done to my car and the way I built my car, it's so original. There's so much stuff I've done to my car that you're like, damn, I didn't even know that was done unless I showed you. Like, hey, look, you even noticed that, you know? But that's a bar because I deal with a lot of them people. It ain't nothing wrong with it. It's just be real with yourself, you know? Like, if you just want a car, you know, and then you could tell who does that because they'd be like, you know, they ask me, hey, should I do this? Should I? I'm like, bro, just do what you want to do. Just, you know, like, I'm just, the, I'm just, I work for you. You know what I'm saying? You know, you want just t tell me what you want I'm like man i'm just you know i just want something i could pull up and do this i'm like okay well what do you want you know I'm like well i don't know i just i'm like all right you know, <laughs> i could kind of see you know and i'm like look this is what we could do we'll keep it simple you know that type of thing but it, it, the, the game lacks a lot of originality and it's unfortunate because there's so much especially now with man you get on ebay and get all kinds of crazy led lights and all kinds of little things that will make such a huge difference you know, um, that's why LGI say you got to blog my car because when people see my car, when they when I drive by, it look like any other Impala. It's candy painted, 4Gs, whatever. When I pull up to a show and I air that, that thing down, you're like, oh, it's on air. You know, ain't another Impala out here like that on air. 
you know, just the game lacks a lot of originality. You know, yeah. and I don't know what's what's the cause of that. You know, I guess it's just people trying to be seen. But it's popular. It's popular. Because because if you look at it, like you said, people. First of all, I pro probably might get killed for saying this, but yeah. I've never really been a car show person. Oh. Hence the reason why I can't join a car club because I don't okay. give a damn about that shit for real. <laughs> but I know that people do, so yeah. I respect wherever you are. Yeah, they'll probably kick me out of the car club because I'm not I'm too original. I'm not pulling up with everybody. I'm yeah. pluck, I'm gonna get there when I'm ready. I'm gonna leave when I'm ready. Right. They're gonna be mad. They're gonna be trying to make me pay dues, all type of stuff. I'm not doing yeah. that's what they but, about my car club. We're do dues. <laughs> right. But the a, a lot of people lack originality and they doing it just just to be seen. Mm -hmm. They ain't really doing it and I feel like you could tell. Of course. I feel like you can all you can I feel like, always tell. As a true car person, you could tell if somebody put some thought into that build. You know, you could look at that car and be like, you just threw that together. It ain't no you didn't put no thought into that. You found some wheels, you threw them on there, you put a standard radio in it, you put, you know, you went to Glenwood and just had them put whatever. You could see it. You could see it. As the average person probably can't, but somebody who builds cars and people who are around cars and and be around people who are really building cars and knows what it really takes to to stand out and see, you know, something like that, man. You look, I go to these shows, I'd be so disappointed sometimes. I done talked to a lot of people about that. I'm like, and and you know, but but if you speak up, it's hate. They say you hating. You know what I'm saying? Not realizing, like, before you say I'm hating, look at my resume. Look at what, you know what I'm saying? Look at what I've done and look at what I've what I'm building and, and what I've been around and who I've been around. I kind of got a kind of got an idea of what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? So it's you know it's a lot it's a lot of that out there, and I think it kind of muddles the 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 game a little bit because you got all these cars out there that people are just you know throwing together and bringing out there. So the dudes who are really like building their cars, like really building, like okay, sitting down and looking like I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. Like no, I'm not gonna do that. Yeah, that's quick, but. I want to go this route, you know, then people get overshadowed by the amount of people that just throw their cars out there. And like I, I said, and like I said, it ain't, it ain't really nothing wrong with it to a certain degree, but it's when these people try to act like they got an opinion. <laughs> well, I don't even say nothing no more, to be honest, me. Yeah. I don't personally say nothing. I just look at them because, you know, them filters do a lot for your car. Mm -hmm. When you be on social, like you ever seen a car? Yeah, I know you don't seen it. You seen can, the car on social I media and it looked amazing. Right. I can think of one right now <laughs> that I saw a Florida. Don't Florida say Classic. it. I don't saw say it. Florida Classic, and I was like, "Ain't no way this is the same car that I've been seeing." I was don't like, say it. No, I ain't gonna say it because I don't want nigga. You Florida nigga. I don't want to come looking for me. But hey, I'm like, from Florida. No, that's what I'm saying. I know how, my wife is from Miami. She's from Miami Garden, so. I know. Oh, yeah, you know how oh your wife got hands. Yeah, Miami Gardens, whole family down there. <laughs> My grandma lived in the hood, like, no, nah, over there by snappers and all that. Yeah, I know. No, nah. so I ain't gonna say nothing, but I know exactly what you're talking about. And you see these cars up close, and it's like, damn, you know, like, how you get all these trophies? You know, <laughs> you know who who. Because most of the time, people giving it away for popularity, and a lot of I'm gonna tell you, I respect. I'm gonna tell you who car show I really respect. Wills by way. I love Wills. I'm gonna tell you why. I can't because wait. you do it on a point system. Okay. Everybody gonna write down their points. You ain't gonna be no giving it away to your homeboy, yeah. or your homegirl. If yeah. that, if your homeboy or homegirl girl didn't get them points, they ain't get no trophy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So That's what it is. Yeah, I can't wait for Wiz, by the way. I try to make, you know, I try to make as many shows as I can just to get out there, network, meet different people. Because there's a lot of people who are starting off where I started off two, three years ago, you know. And I'm like, okay, what do you do? You know, I'm going to try you out. I'm going to try to, you know, I'm trying to give you the benefit of doubt because that's how I got where I got people trying me out and then me building a name for myself, you know. But, yeah, that's that's a big part of it. Oh, my God. Especially with these Impalas, man. I I see them all the time, and I'm like, you know, we just, like I said, we just did a show in New Orleans. Shout out to Louisiana Inc. They, we just, I just drove down to New Orleans on Saturday, and we had a meet down there, a big Impala meet. And there were some beautiful cars down there, some awesome cars down there, you know. And the Impala community is very small. You know, most of the people that got these cars, they know each other. You know, either we all part of the same car club or we on the same Facebook pages, 
you know, stuff like that. So it's it's very hard to, you know, stand out. You know, so you really got to come with some heat, you know. Right. And that's why I, I like I like Wade's show. I like Whip Addict's show. Whip Addict's show is super dope. Can't wait for him to do his thing again. He's Whip Addict is another one I got to shout out that really got me in this game. You know, like he came, filmed me doing Carlos's car two years ago. You know, when he promoted my stuff, that's when it really kind of blew up. And then he just did a feature on my car probably like two, three months ago. He came to the shop and, and filmed my car and put it out there. And I got a bunch of, I got some business from that and, you know, a lot of love on my car and stuff like that. So that's, you know, you know, but what was crazy was I was me before my car. You know, a lot of people have gained popularity on their car. I just brought my car. Nobody saw my car for the last year. You know what I'm saying? My car just came out in February. You know, I just put my car out there. But people, you know, people, people didn't even know I had a car for a long time. <laughs> You know, you know, I do a, I do a little snippet on when I'm, you know, letting people know that the video has been uploaded to YouTube. That might be the snippet right there. Yeah. You say what? So you was I, what? Say that one more time. I was known before my car. I was known before my car. People just started seeing my car. Yeah, people know I had an Impala. Oh, yeah, you must have an Impala, but I ain't never seen it. I just brought my car out. Just brought my car out. And the way I brought my car out now is the best it's ever been. So when I when I had my car a couple of years ago, it didn't look how it looked. Now I have four Gs. It wasn't painted. The bumper was a different color. You know what I'm saying? The, the, it had a, it had an LS in it, but you know that was it. That was all it had really had going. You know. So now that I brought the car out, people see the car. They're like, "Oh, that's his car." You know. And now they're like, "Oh, okay, that nigga know what he's doing." You know. So that kind of helped it. And plus, I've done a couple. You know, I got. LGI car coming out. I got an LSA car about to drop, you know, and, you know, people, they're going to be big, you know, but, you know, that's going to speak for itself, you know. And I did, you know, I did work for Carlos and stuff like that, too. So that kind of preceded me. But, yeah, I was known before my car. <laughs> so it was a lot of people that wasn't them before their car. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. Of course. Of course. The car make them. You ever lose that car? That's it for you, buddy. You know, because even last year, I went to every show last year without my car. I had a great time. You know, a lot of people can't do that. If they're not there with their car, nobody know who they are. Right. You know, if you, if you, because they're as people that I know personally, I see their car, I'm like, oh, okay, that's what's the name. You know, but if I was seeing them walking around, I wouldn't really know who it is, you know, or I wouldn't know they were there. But that's a bit, that's a right. bar too, you know. Yeah, I was, I was known before my car. You know? So, my last question um, yeah. when you're no longer doing this, um, what would you? you like for your legacy to be just you know what what i've built it from so far just being known as the you know i'm just some just my name otg synonymous with impala you know like i always kind of mess with people and i quote that um from coming to america he's like you think of garbage think of akeem you know like when you think of impala you think of ray you think of otg and it's it's almost at that point. And it's not for a it's not really for a notoriety. It's not really to be famous or nothing like that. It's just I put in so much work and so much time and so much blood, sweat, and tears into this, you know, like and there's nobody else that's done it the way that I've done it. You know, and that's just you know, that's just me and that and I did it on my own for the most part. You know, I've had like I said, whip at it, Carlos, people that have helped me along the way, but I reached out and made those connections. I reached out and built those relationships on my own. Nobody, nobody gave me anything. You know, nobody gave me this shop. I came in here and paid for this shop. I went broke putting a deposit down on this shop. You know, I've been broke since I, I had the shop. <laughs> I've been in debt since I had the shop. But I get in here and I, I do what I got to do and I keep it going, you know. Um, so that would be the legacy, man, just knowing that, you know, I had something that I did something nobody else did. Because as far as I, I could be wrong, but as far as I know, I've never heard of another shop in the country ever that only does Impala. I've, I've never heard of them. You know, I, I know people that have worked on them. I've known they were like, I know Thornton Chevrolet at one point, they would do a lot of them. You know, a lot of, that was like the only dealership you could take them to, the only people that would take them. Um, but I just want to be known as like the one dude that like really understood these bubbles and, and built them and, and, and just you know, brought, brought them back, you know, because a lot of bubbles got forgotten for a long time, you know, because you go to a lot of these car shows, there's no best bubble Chevy category in 90% of these shows, unless it's somebody who has had one, you know, like the, like the, the one step show, you know, the best bubble one, you know, my boy, shout out to my boy Aaron Dozier, you know, he had a bubble, that's how I met him, 
through the Impala. So it's like, unless it's somebody directly involved with these cars, they honestly don't get a lot of love at these shows. So I'm trying to change that. I'm trying to bring awareness to them. That's why I started the YouTube. That's why I go to these shows and meet people like, yeah, man, I build Impalas. I'm like, oh, for real? Like, that's it? I'm like, that's all I touch. You know, like I said, now the shop itself will be taking, you know, other cars coming up because of the guy I got working for me. He's really good. He can handle anything. But me personally, I'm only touching Impalas and that'll be forever. I don't I don't ever want to work on anything else. You know, so that'll Would be Would you ever life. change your name? Um yeah, because I'm not attached to the name. Like I said, the name and I'll even give y'all a snippet where, where the name came from. So like I told you in the beginning, I had a mobile mechanic business called On the Go Mechanic Service. So people started calling me OTG as a shortened version of that. So even these shirts this shirt that I'm wearing. My wife made this shirt for me back in like 2018. She made these patches that say OTG mechanic. And that was from when I was mobile and I just kept them. So when I changed, when I got the building and had the actual physical space, I just kept the name because of the bank accounts and the Instagram, everything was already there. So if you go way back in my Instagram, like way back in the beginning, you'll see all my mobile work, me driving around doing starters on civics and struts on Hondas and you know, stuff like that. So, I mean, the name really does doesn't mean anything to me. I'll always be Ray. You know, um, even if I change the name, people are still going to call me OTG. You know, that'll never change. Like, if I ever change my name, nobody's going to, you know, it's like anybody else that going anywhere. You know, if, if Todd moved to Switzerland, that nigga's still going to be College Park. You know, like, they don't make just, that name is just, it is what it is. So I would never personally change it. I would probably, you know, if I decide to ever step away from this and maybe do something different, I would I would change the name of the shop, you know, like I would have a shop called Paula's Anonymous or something, you know, but I would always be known as, as OTG, you know, a lot of people don't even know my real name. <laughs> they just know yeah. me as, as OTG. Cause I read it and thought of a new shop name. I'm gonna tell you later. Okay. But if you de decide to take the name, just, you know, yeah. shout me out or something. I'm gonna, um, <laughs> real quick, I know we about to be done. I just want to show the people a little, a little bit of what I do. Um, I was talking about my bo my boy LGI. He, I know he on here. Shout out to him. I shouldn't even show him, but it's you know this is a LS swap we did for him. Um, and it's on my YouTube channel. Mm. It's pretty much wrapped up. I've been driving it. You know, just a couple small things left on it. Um, I work on LTs. This is a LT one, eighty thousand mile LT. Put the transmission in it. Um, you know, so I do LT stuff. And then this is my boy Derek Carr. I know y'all seen this. This one, we're doing a six so swap on this one. Um, you know, so, I mean, I got I got an LSA motor over there. So, you know, and my shop, it's not a big shop. It's a, it's a pretty small shop. It's, you know, enough room for three cars. You know, so mm -hmm. we, you know, it's just me here, you know, and, you know, my guy that I got working for me. But, you know, I got cars parked outside and stuff like that. But, you know, it's humble beginnings. You know, one day I hope to have a big shop and I'm out there like Ken Diggett just – in the office chilling in the AC and I got 20 people down there building these cars, but you know, right now, you know, I'm putting in this groundwork, you know, what? starting off. What with... I told you, you ain't supposed to say one day you hope. Okay. You're supposed to say one day I am. One we just you... talked about it. You know what? My best friend would kick my ass right now if he heard me say that. Cause that's something, that's something he preached to me all the time. I'm not trying to break my shop. Yeah. One day <laughs> nah, nah, you I'm... are, that what you're supposed to say. What's up, man? I'm still on this live, but you can come in. <laughs> But anyway, I just that was my last question. Is there anything else you would like the people to know before you get out of here? No, nah, man, just really everything that I've talked about, you know, be original, you know, um, think outside the box, you know, if if you want to, if you know, and, but like I said, again, I'm not I'm not a hater. You know, if you want to go buy somebody else's project because you just want to roll for a little while and then sell it, hey, man, be yourself. You know, that's that's really the biggest thing. If that's what you are, that's what you are. But don't don't fake it you know and um you know check out my youtube channel you might learn something it's otg mechanic all my stuff is otg mechanic um you know holla at me if you need some work on a b body you know and um i'll be at the car shows this year um just a little housekeeping don't ask me to diagnose your car at the car show you know <laughs> i just you know just I know, like, people be, you know, with the YouTube and stuff, people be excited. Like, oh, man, I follow your channel. Hey, so check this out, man. I got this leak, you know. And I'm like, bro, I'm, I'm, in my, I'm dressed up. I got, you know, I'm chilling. I ain't trying to work. <laughs> you know, but, well, nah, that's it. I want to tell you.
you. Thank you for taking time oh, to talk to us today. It's been greatly appreciated. Um, so if anybody is looking to get your, you say 90, so big, what years? So B-Body, so 91 through 96 um, mm -hmm. Impalas, or I'm sorry, 91 through 96 Caprices, 94 through 96 Impalas, Roadmasters, Fleetwoods, anything with an LT1 except Camaros. I don't do, I don't do, I, don't, I can't do the Camaros. It's too tight in there. I just, I just stay away from theirs, but but um impalas especially i mean we in atlanta 90 percent of people driving a caprice or impala anyway so um you know and you know you can ask ask your friends ask ask people about me before you bring me your car if you want um you know i've done i've worked on a lot of impala guys so. like i said thank you so much for sitting down with us pleasure. today i appreciate it and yeah, if you guys are not following him, make sure you go do that now. Make sure you subscribe to his YouTube channel. Go. And I appreciate you. Absolutely. All right. Have a good night. You too. Guys, so that was OTG Mechanic. Y'all make sure y'all go subscribe to his YouTube channel. Also, make sure you go follow him on Instagram. And if you're looking to get your 91 to 96 Impala, worked on you that is your guy so that's all he specializes in thank you for tuning in to today's episode of rise and vibes and i will see you guys next week same time same day have a good night